Hi, my name is Jim Rice. I manage the Oregon Marine Mammal Stranding Network and study the marine mammals that come ashore along the Oregon coast. Marine mammals come ashore for a variety of reasons. In many cases, a sailor or sea lion is simply trying to get some rest on the beach, while in other situations, illness or injury may be the cause. And hundreds of deceased marine mammals are found on Oregon beaches each year, presenting many questions for us. We strive to learn from each of them. Each year, we investigate reports of hundreds of stranded pinnipeds, seals and sea lions, and cetaceans, whales, dolphins, and porpoises. A fair number of these turn out to be live animals that are not necessarily distressed, but still require some level of response or investigation. The graph on the left side of the screen shows the average number of seal and sea lion strandings we see each year. Of the six different species we encounter, the majority are California sea lions, followed by harbor seals. Of the 22 species of cetaceans, whales, dolphins, and porpoises we've documented since 2006, the vast majority are harbor porpoises. Once we receive a report of a stranded animal through phone calls, emails, and texts from the general public and from our partners in state and federal agencies, our first task is to collect data about the event. This includes getting a positive identification of the species, determining its precise location, and obtaining body measurements and photographs. Live animals are monitored and are sometimes transported to rehabilitation facilities. For deceased animals, post-mortem examinations are done at our lab at the Hatfield Marine Science Center or at the Oregon Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory, part of the OSU's Carlson College of Veterinary Medicine in Corvallis, or on site at stranding locations. A necropsy of this female stellar sea lion revealed that she had succumbed to a severe abdominal infection caused by salmonella bacteria. Marine Mammal Stranding Networks provide continuous surveillance for emerging infectious and zoonotic diseases in marine mammals in areas frequented by the general and unsuspecting public, as well as for human causes of marine mammal injury and mortality. These include fishery takes, ship strikes, shootings, and entanglements in marine debris. Disease trends can point to large-scale disruptions in the marine environment, including shifting prey resources and harmful algal blooms. This killer whale calf stranded on a beach on the southern Oregon coast and was transported to and examined at OSU's Veterinary Diagnostic Lab in Corvallis. It was CT scanned prior to being necropsied in order to get as detailed a picture of its condition as possible. We were particularly interested in the possibility of pre-mortem trauma, perhaps caused by a ship collision or excessive underwater noise. Fortunately, none was found. We did discover that normal complications during birth probably led to its demise. Live marine mammals that come ashore are frequent victims of harassment from people who might not realize how harmful their actions are. There's an ongoing need for a mediating effort to help safeguard these animals, which are federally protected under the Marine Mammal Protection Act. Straining network volunteers provide much of this service. Springtime is harbor seal pupping season. During this time of year, pups are frequently found alone on area beaches. They are usually not stranded, but simply resting and waiting for their mothers to come back ashore to nurse them. Mother seals are shy and unlikely to rejoin a pup if there is activity nearby. It is very important not to interfere with this process, and especially not to move a pup from where it's receiving care from its mother. Within three or four weeks of birth, harbor seal pups are weaned from their mothers and left to fend for themselves. This is often a very challenging stage of life, and not all pups survive. And while it may be tempting to pick them up, their best chance of survival is to be left alone on the beach. This young northern elephant seal recently spent seven days on a busy Newport beach while she was undergoing an annual molting process. She unwittingly found resting areas on a busy pedestrian path, so we posted and reposted signs to help minimize disturbance from curious onlookers. Once she was feeling well enough, she headed back out to sea. We certainly appreciate reports of animals that are in distress, but it's important to keep in mind that normal behaviors are often misconstrued as something dire. Gray whales often forage very close to shore and are often mistakenly reported as being sick, injured, or entangled, when in fact they're simply earning a living foraging in dense patches of prey. Here a gray whale is feeding on small invertebrates in the shallows of the surf zone, flying on its side to access its food supply. The International Whaling Commission identifies entanglements as the main human-caused threat to large whales. 
estimating that worldwide 300,000 whales, dolphins, and porpoises die from entanglements each year. The documentation collected during an entanglement response can inform researchers and fishery managers how the whale became entangled and may hold insights that can inform new strategies to prevent future entanglements. Entanglements of sea lions are unfortunately all too common. They're typically caused by plastic packing bands that end up in the marine environment and found by curious sea lions who easily get them accidentally wrapped around their necks. This animal was treated with the use of a specially designed isolation cage with help from the Oregon Coast Aquarium, local veterinarians, and the Port of Newport. Once the entangled sea lion was confined, he was lightly sedated and the band was removed. He was then released back to the water and his neck wound was able to heal on its own. This young northern fur seal was rescued and successfully treated after it had been found with a serious neck entanglement caused by plastic line that had been attached to a balloon that somebody had released into the air, probably not realizing the harm it could cause to marine life. This little guy was lucky. And last but not least, although they're not mammals, sea turtles are all threatened or endangered protected species. And so we do our best to rescue live ones and study those that don't survive. These animals are all native to waters much warmer than those in the Pacific Northwest. And when they arrive in our frigid waters, they succumb to severe hypothermia, a condition known as cold stunning. Our work keeps us vigilant about changes in the health and challenges to the welfare of marine mammals along the Oregon coast, providing a unique window into the lives of these amazing animals in the state of the natural world. Stranding networks can only function successfully with an engaged, cooperative, and diverse community of stakeholders. Please report any stranded animals you encounter. And thanks for your interest in our work.